Okay, we're back. We're about to head into the second matchup here with Liquid and Optic. But before we get into that, there's been a bit of an update. And you know what? It's one of those that's already trivial across all the social media platforms to include Reddit, I'm sure. But we're looking at things such as a $2,000 Negev uh, in the game. Uh, and I'm not sure how you feel about this vendetta, but uh, it's definitely one of those things. So thoughts, concerns, questions, comments? A lot of, lot of concerns. Well, I'll tell you where you can send them. <laughs> Gabe at ValveSoftware.com. It's actually kidding. true. He will respond eventually. Eventually. Uh, like, not even kidding. Uh, but it's okay. It's not permanent, which is good, I guess. But, yeah, you can already see. The problem with this is that, like, the first, you know, two or three seconds of it is just a mess. But look at that. That's 100% accuracy just, like, straight off the bat. You don't even have to do anything. There's literally no movement on the mouse at all. It's just straight. And it does that at long range as well. You can be in pit on dust too and do that stuff all the way up into the site. It kind of shoots and sounds like a paintball gun. It's weird. It's going to be so, like, I, I really feel for for Days of Blue right now. Because if this gets brought out Look during the games, that, you could potentially have five fun. Negevs. You could potentially have five Negevs and anti-ecos. And you're never going to hear anything ever again. That's very true. Uh, I mean, okay, so the Negev is $2,000. Yeah, it's less than the P90. And I guess that means Val is somehow experimenting more than I did in college, which, if you ask me, college, <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's anyway. Good, good thing you went to college when videos weren't a thing, right? Videos weren't yeah. a thing? You're old, right? How old like, do you think I am, man? Good same with the scoots, right? Oh, yeah. My. Got me. Anyway, we've got a great matchup coming your way before this got awkwardly, weirdly out of control. <laughs> And with that being said, we're going to look at Cobble between Liquid and Optic. And we just saw Nuke, okay? So are we going to see the same vibes going into this one? I think it's going to be a bit, well, not as one-sided. Uh, I actually think Liquid has a pretty good chance going into this map. Uh, these two teams played each other, you know, just the, uh, just the other day. Obviously, Liquid without Twist is their fifth. But I don't know. I've always uh, enjoyed watching Liquid on uh, on Cobble, and I think obviously with Stanislaw as well, they're still going to have you know a lot of structure to what they're doing. And we saw that being extremely you know valuable for them on the T side here on Nuke. And I think it's going to be a similar case on Cobble as well. Like just doing very simple things is only going to take you so far when you go up against very good teams. So I think that's where Optic are going to hit a bit of a wall. Now both teams playing with a, a stand-in, so yeah. to say, right? And now. Think about the mentality on both sides of that fence, okay? So I think, obviously, Optic has played a little bit more Jason R than perhaps Liquid and Twist. Yeah. Uh, so imagine the growing pains. There, there's a quite a few different uh, scenarios we could look at here. Yeah, no, there definitely is. And obviously, Twist is going to have to jump into a role that, you know, he maybe not have been as comfortable with. You know, it's not uh, potentially not the same as he played in Misfits as well on this map, which is, uh, you know, could be awkward to deal with, especially on your CT side, because CT side on Cobble is very difficult to handle. It's, in many ways, a similar scenario as to Nuke in that sense. Well, we're going to take a look now at some Stromberg strategies. Eric DeBear Stromberg is going to break it down on Cobble with Team Optic. Hello, thank you again. Welcome back to Stronger Strategies. We're going to take a look at Optic on Cabo, specifically not fly. And what I want to bring from this is trust, guys. Do you trust me? Probably not. But you know what? Not fly, they you have to trust him. You have his teammates has to trust him because look at this. He buys an op. Not fly, buying an op. He does op sometimes, but again, you have a a team with Mixwell, Tarek, very, very capable oppers. So what Optic had to do, they had to trust not fly with the ops. Like, okay, not fly up. Why not? So he's going to get a oh, nice kill right there. Why not start off with a good kill? And a sick wall bane off of nothing. Now it's a two-on-one situation. Now Tarek is putting trust in Nof again to win this round because Tarek, he's distracting. Nofly is doing the great thing. He's hiding, guys. He's not going to peek. He's not going to give the, the opportunity for him to die. So he's going to just peek, not defusing, fall back again, guys. He's not going to – he's just going to stall as long as possible because he, um, Shroud has to come to him to, in order to kill him, place a bomb, Good job by not fly. And again, right here, you have three tech nines, pretty much a, a poor spy with a lot of utility. Not fly, gonna to toss this little neat little smoke. A smoke wall execute. Cloud nine is forced to play behind the smoke. And this is not fly hopping on through. They're exchanging kills, could ex um, kill exchange from optic. And right here, again, his teammates are trusting not fly to stay back and, and to play the bomb, guys. He's not peeking, he's not giving away information, he's just hiding because if he gives information, then C9 can kind of shut him out with a Molotov or nades or anything to kind of pours him out, but since he hasn't peaked, he, his teammates are trusting him 
to win the round. He peaks when they're up close and not shooting at him. Great peak by him. And again, he's, he's playing around. He's stalling as long as he can. Then he goes for the kill. Great job by Nafly. Very underrated player. Maybe not because they're pretty good. Um, but um, sometimes you just got to give them up. You got you, you to gotta trust and go with the instincts sometimes. And Optic, they do that a lot. And they, they're pretty good at it. Back to you guys. Thank you, Eric. I think, uh, you know, the point that really hit me is you got to trust your instincts sometimes. And I think yeah. uh, really and truly you trust your instincts all the time. And Go with gut feeling. Gut feeling. Gut usually isn't wrong unless, you know, it is. you're blue and you buy a skateboard. But the point <laughs> is, the point is we're going into cobble with I, optic I'm and liquid. <laughs> going to cobble, optic and liquid. How's this one going to go down? Uh, I, I, I would favor Liquid going into this one, even though they're coming in with a new player in Twists. Uh, from what we've seen with uh, from Optic, uh, you know, with Jason R on Cobble, not been too impressive, honestly. And I think uh, Liquid on their end, even though they've had some downs, down period and down swings uh, on this map, I think they should be all right for this. I think Twist is reliable in that sense. Sense he's going to be serviceable. He managed to deal with Nuke decently. Uh, obviously not, you know, setting any, uh, anything on fire in that sense, but you know. Uh, just doing what he was supposed to do for for the better part of it, and I think that's gonna transfer over to Cobble as well. Well, let's see if you're right. Standing by are the Blaze Combo Blue and Dazed, who are ready to get us right into that action. Well, this will be fun, as uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Nakab is very much, as far as we're aware, enabled for this upcoming match, and indeed, it does only cost two thousand dollars. Which, uh, what does that mean, Dazed? I mean, it means. We're probably going to see a lot of Negev usage. I mean, for two thousand dollars, it's. I would much rather have a Negev. I would. I would pick a Negev over an M4. Actually, would you? I think so. It's right. one shot headshot. It's ridiculous spray. You're going to be able to spam through smokes twenty four seven. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's a it's a damn laser beam. You're after very the first very slow bullets. with it though. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Your velocity is super slow, but at the same time, I would. I mean, if I have four thousand dollars, there's no doubt in my mind I'm buying a Negev armor. All right. Well, let's get Bunch into. Of nades. Let's get into. No doubt in my mind. <laughs> let's get into it now and see if uh, Team Liquid or Optic will be choosing to use this stuff for their first round here. Dropping back in pretty quickly. Nice shot from Elise, but traded out even faster by Optic as Naf gets a double rush, contributing in for a third. But he does go down to Nitro in that exchange. The last two on Team Liquid. This was an attempt at an A pinch. Now are going to be pushing themselves up the ramp. Where currently it's just Jason R defending the site. The cavalry is arriving quickly though, and oh no, they're going right to the trap. But it seems to have worked out well for them. JDM sneaks in for a double kill, and now which is just Jason R alone in a 1v2. Hilker is going to attempt to chase down these last two Liquid players, but they've already escaped into the bomb site and are planning it right now. Jason R out the door, trying to get himself behind the rock position, but there's nowhere safe for him in all reality here. He's only got that rock position to hold on to. Everything else is a gamble. Stannis Law could have gone anywhere. He could be hiding out behind the pizza box. He could be up on top right there. He spotted him out now, but Jason R, oh, nicely found, and he gets the second one as well. So Jason R clutches out at the end of it, and we will see that pistol going by the way of Optic. Wow, great shots by Jason R. Very clever strat. Uh, not necessarily at the start, but a, a clever adjustment by Stan to run through connector to get those two kills. Honestly, I think the, the player that was close to, uh, you know, the rat hole or whatever you want to call it, should have probably gotten one and put it into a 1v1, but uh, put it into a 2v1, but Jason R closes it out. Does a good job. See, like right here, I wouldn't have the FAMAS. There's no way in hell I would have the FAMAS. I would just have him to get. Mm -hmm. But then again, I don't know. They might have, they, they they might have done even, like a gentleman's agreement. Yeah, thing. they might have said that. Yeah. So, hey, no Negevs. All right, sure. So at the moment, just be going the normal path here. With Sucks for us. <laughs> yeah, that would have been... If uh, I was on T side, I would... Next round, I would have Negev full nades for sure. Yeah. I, don't, I wouldn't buy AKs or M4s. I wouldn't. They could have all spot Negevs right here with no armor or anything. Oh, yeah. I mean, it would have been five Negevs. But it looks like they decided not to do that, so no purchases yet. And I, I guess for now we're going to assume gentlemen's agreement, but who knows? Things change over the course of some of these matches, and that could very well go by the wayside if this gets competitive enough. Than that, though, Team Liquid pretty much setting up for a fairly standard opener here. A little bit of pressure towards A-Long doesn't really go so well. So they end up backing up now. 
And actually, it's looking like they may regress inside of that mid connector here. Still holding Nitro to try and go for probably some drop control there. But other than that, everybody is going to pinch in through this mid connector and try to swing out quickly towards A. Jason R is going to be first point of contact here, hiding in the corner right outside of it. Nice nade as well. Did massive damage to three players on Team Liquid here. Jason R was spotted, however, but thankfully he's got support from Rush and even Mixwell now here too. So Nitro, one of the last players live, attempts to make a hop inside, but doesn't get anything much done. And now JDM all on his lonesome here will be found out by Tarek. And that will be the second round. Going by the way of Optic, very cleanly, all five alive. So Liquid should be buying here, they do. No to give yet. Yeah, that sucks. But a Galil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> Even in, under that circumstance. <laughs> You're thinking like it would go towards a Negev there, but no. That sucks. Anyway, on the opener here, Team Liquid pretty much the same as the last round. A couple players outside towards A, a few more playing around with the uh, the ramp push right now. Beyond that, we do have Optic in a similar sort of holding pattern with, I believe, it's a four stack on B, and they have a counter boosted mix wall over the top. So he is going to be waiting on the other side of the wall, trying to check this out right now. So it was smoked off, however, so Liquid may be a little bit weary of this. Doesn't end up mattering, though. Mixwell gets the first kill anyway. Trades out for a nice Negev upgrade, or not Negev, uh, Galil upgrade there. And now he's just gonna fall back down towards drop. Now they have the 5v4 advantage. No map control to gain from Liquid. They are creeping out through mid pretty quickly here, but I think they didn't really make this a priority or even, you know, a want to try and hold off on that ramp. So they're gonna let them walk all the way up. There is literally nobody paying attention to this. So they're just gonna walk right in. Hello, there's Nap. There goes Mixwell. And all of a sudden they've traded this back out. There's a player up on top here that's gonna try to hold in the shed, but no, <laughs> Elise almost sprays down his teammate. But he does follow through with picking up the kill on the Jason are as well. So just like that, the round is Team Liquids, and it's down to Tarek. Unless he can somehow pull off a 1v4, this is 100% going their way. Optics is just, they're just a mess right now. I mean, blowing that huge lead on Nuke, just not watching and not ready for like, people just walking through Connector while you essentially have two players in Connector. I mean, the, the round shaped up from a 4v5 into a 4v1 in the span of three seconds. There should have Yep. That should have been such an easy round for Optic. Literally nobody paying attention to the ramp, and they just walk right up, go inside of the doorway, and it goes out of control way too quickly. Even when they try to take the duels on site, they end up losing out there anyway. So everything going the way that Liquid had hoped it would there, and it ends up working out great after they lose out initially due to uh, Mixwell getting up on top of that boost and picking up the early kill for them. And then all this falls by the wayside. So that's a 2-1 start here now. And we'll get the replay of Nitro just pulling off that play. One, two, and back on the outside. A lot more kills were claimed on the A site. Hopefully for Loptic, there is still going to be enough money to reinvest, however. So they go back into another buy. Limited utility for some players. Rush actually at the moment not purchasing anything at all. I don't know if he... He might have disconnected, actually. No, he's there. Just a little bit late. So he does buy into a FAMAS. Uh, the rest of the team, though, a bit slow to kind of spread themselves out here. It is looking like they're going to go into just a default, like, 3-2 after they kind of get themselves together. And Team Liquid... Once again, also opening up with the same style of play here that we had seen in some previous rounds. Just three on the outside holding there with two more trying to push over here towards the broken wall. And JDM experimenting earlier on with the shots on the AK. Hoping to find anyone if he can. Molly bouncing, just not the way that Nitro would have liked. Ends up burning itself away, and it's a waste of some money there for those T's. Won't matter too much, though. There's no one from the CT side waiting here anyway. The closest uh, player from the CT area is going to be Jason R holding on the bottom of the ramp. Definitely uh, don't want to have what happened in that last round occur once more here. As we do see Nap actually claiming the first kill. Tarek tries to get aggressive, pushing himself up through the broken wall platform, but Stanislaw trades that kill back out. Leaves us into another 4v4, and now we have to hope that Jason R can impact when Team Liquid do decide to throw their players out through the mid-connector. That may include the bomb as well. Timing on this Molotov is good, but it is going to give away the position of Jason R more than likely. And with Twist knocking out Mixwell, I mean, Jason R is stuck. He's got to take a battle now. Gets one, but is then traded out by a player on the upper side there. That's Twist knocking him out. 4v, or excuse me, a 3v2 is what this will go down to. Nobody on the CD side is going to be able to line up for a flank of any kind here. Rush, not even really waiting for his teammate either, just going right in. He's got to be careful of that corner. It's Twist is still waiting there, just outside of A long. That kills Rush before he can even start the retake. And now Nap is alone and may end up suffering from the same sort of fate here as he is taking the same path as his formerly alive teammate, but decides against it. 
And is now looking to go over here towards Balcony instead, where he does check up the first kill. But now he's been spotted. And at 36 HP, there's not going to be much else that he can do. So it is looking like he'll fall back to save. Yeah, Twist getting a nice 3k. Um, I believe that's going to force Optic on a save, besides that M4. Yeah, so no money on them. So they broke their economy, and Liquid's, you know, starting again strong on this T side. I mean, and we'll see if they could just do the same thing they essentially did on Nuke, right? Which is just absolutely dominate on this T side. And, and Optic just not even watching the basic positionings at times. It seems like they may be poised for something like that to happen. So, well, Optic does for us. Tark and afford an op. But what is the spy? Two USPs, an op, now they buy. Like, happened, look at the that confusion. Happened, that happened last time with Rush, too, where Rush like stayed and spawned for an extra like three to four seconds. Yeah, because they just are confused and just don't have that leadership, I guess. But they do have Jason R. <laughs> So he's going to get the first kill. That's on, what they do have. And on, on as he tries to push himself out there. Puts it into a 5v4 with Optic having the lead on it. But we still have to uh, we still have to see. You know, we've, we've seen this situation transpire before, too. And it's been turned back around. Although that's a good shot from Tarek. That's the bomb, too. Knocking off Stanislaw there. So this actually could lead into a really good situation for Optic. Thankfully for Optic, Liquid just keep killing into the players with the big guns in hand. They haven't found themselves in a matchup against either Rush or Mixwell just yet. And even if they do, they're both playing together, actually, in a nice cross spray angle. So should they both get challenged, then more than likely we should, at the very least, be able to see a trade. Unless someone's really on point with their aim here. JDM waiting that one out very patiently. Finally picks up a kill here against Jason R. Knocks out one of the big guns out of the hands from these players here. Tarek taking the first shot, giving himself away that he is still in this position. Meanwhile, though, Rush got another kill and drop. And with 40 seconds left, Liquid, they'll be able to retrieve the bomb, but they're on a mission to rotate back over here towards A. And that should, in theory, be really telegraphed. But at the moment, Optic not really reading into that. And they only have Naf waiting up on the site. But he's the player with an M4, gets the first kill, an attempt at a trade from Twist, but it fails. And Naf gets a double to close out on the round in the favor of Optic. Yeah, so Optic, even though three players buy, two players kind of sit there. Um, really fast, I guess, scouting by Elise. He thinks they're saving for sure. And Jason R. Doesn't have any of that. He's not. <laughs> Shuts him down. <laughs> I'm, I'm like a firm believer in if you could have an op, you could win the round because it's just make him 4v5. You could take deep map control like they just did. I know Jason was the one that made it 4v5. So I actually like that buy, that buy. That that purchased by them. I just did not realize Tark would even have enough money for that. Mm -hmm. But he did. Important to sign out there too. I think Nath actually threw away his M4 at the end of that round to try and pick up an AK and didn't get the AK. So we did have to fully rebuy the M4 going into this round. Speaking of which, this round not going too hot for Liquid. Quick three kills for Optic. We've already seen Nath pick up the fourth. Nitro trying to do a good job of turning this round. The two quick headshots against Tarek and Nath. He'll look for a third. Everybody from Optic is here waiting for him though. They forced him into the sidewall and further back on the, uh, the the broken wall approach here, so well, I was looking like he could try to battle this back for a second. This is looking pretty rough now. Still has a Molotov, so he can restrict the CTs a tad, but okay. Probably don't want to peek into that too aggressively. Rush will finally just knock him out, though. And it is going to be another round for Optic as they restore their lead here, putting Liquid on to more than likely an eco in this next round. Got Let's Liquid trying to just jump out of B, but to the two players at San or Statue, excuse me, they dodge the flash. Naf kills the people jumping through the smoke. Tarek looks to the right side of the smoke, hits his first shot before he misses the next four. <laughs> no, but uh, so a good hold by them. They dodge the flash and just kill him while they jump out of the smoke. It becomes pretty easy because they, uh, they didn't have a sidewalk smoke either. So they're looking at drop and then the statue player just kind of swings to the right. Well, it's going to be slow from Team Liquid more than likely in this round, as we can see their players just stacking outside. Wait. Yeah, they're slow strats. They're having much more success on even going back to nuke. Um, when they did like that upper rush, for instance, on the anti-eco, it ended at 2v2. When it was 15-11, they upper rushed and lost that round, if you remember, when they all had like umps. It seems like they're slow strats um, kind of catching Optic off guard because they're getting in spots that Optic just don't even realize are open, like Connector, you know, two rounds now. Good timing on the small top here. He is actually going to restrict Liquid a little bit here, but oh my goodness, they don't even trade out there. And Jason R and Mixwell just dominating that situation. Nav, I think, getting an assist or two in there as well. As Optic pick up an easy fifth. Jason R and Mixwell, the duo. Nicely together there. 
but overall, not too much happening in that round. And now we'll see what the action will lead to again as Liquid do get themselves into another buy coming off of that save. Full AKs with decent utility, a bit lax on like Molotovs and HEs. You can see they've only got one of each sitting on JDM and Twist. Now if even still rolling with an SMG at this point as well, so later on in the round here, but Liquid early on is tossing a few nades out onto that B site. Definitely not going to be aggressing towards it just yet. You've got Stan leading the charge over here, trying to make a little bit of noise, I imagine, on B, but the bomb is still sitting back outside near the fountain in the mid-courtyard. So a lot going on out there before they actually set this up uh, to push towards either one of those sites. Liege going in to check for mid connector twos. This could turn itself into another sort of drop split, having Stanislaw be that player that takes the drop initiative. Nitro, again, nice control with the AK there. Picks up a nice headshot on Jason R. JDM follows it through. Unfortunately, Stan doesn't have much, much success over there inside of drop. Rush turning him up. What was important is that the A site take went essentially flawlessly. Uh, it's an impossible retake. Mm -hmm. They're just going to save right away. Uh, I mean, they just double entry them at A without even throwing any smokes, just taking the gun battles. Jason not playing the the wall and those poles properly. You know who's really like amazing at that is Taz actually. Taz when he's around there, I swear every time they don't like push him off with nades and they're not coming too long, we'll get like a three or a four K. He's just a beast at that position. Uh, they're looking for exits. Rush gets one, and this A site has been just very problematic uh, for for Optic. It's pretty much where they've gotten all their rounds. But even, as we said, it's all there before. One moving in to hunt him down, but it doesn't look like they're going to send anyone else in. Keep in mind the money that they're still working with there. Very, very low. Rosantic is still going to have enough cash to be able to buy into this next round more than likely here. And there's easy openers here. Killing those two players right off the bat. Obviously, Rotate's attempted to move in quickly, but with those two players just taking the duels front and center, not even trying to wait it out from within the site there, it gives it away all too quickly and allows for an easy closeout on Team Liquid and an easy force of a save as well, with Optic not really having a choice there but to fall back and run it out. Thankfully for them, they still have that cash flow, so they're right back into it. Op of the full buy still on Mixwell, everybody else having rifles in the same style of buy, so they're still looking good to try and turn this back into their favor as they'll hold the two-round lead still. Past that, we've also seen Optic getting a little bit more, even more forward actually with their own A aggression here. We can see that Jason R pushing himself up now back over here to the edge of A long. They kind of switched positions. Mixwell's not at A, he's opping the steps of B. It's a full three player commitment towards A as well, which is something you're not actually going to see. Good adjustment though by Optic. They realize that that's been a problem, so they're going to send Mixwell on the plat. He could take B control and opt pretty deep. Then you could just have three players towards A. And now as we see the T's going in towards drop, they Jason will made noise. take control there. So Jason's going to be checked for. And the Liege knocking him out quickly. Now it's down to Tarek here. He'll get one, but also trade it up pretty quickly. The bomb, however, I think is spotted in this place. They're going to know it's here. Rush taking contact well, again, but it's a wide swung play. And it's easy for Liquid's players to trade back out. Still leaving us in a 3v2 with Nitro holding drop control, which is another factor that they may not be aware of just yet. Thankfully for them, Mixel's paying attention to it. So he does isolate that, takes him down. But another Another trade from Elige as he also knocks out Naf here. So it's down to Mixwell to pull up a 1v2. Smoked out, I think, still towards Dory. No, that's gone away actually. So tries to go for the quick scope, but misses it. And that's going to sell the end of the round there as Stanislaw closes out with that final kill. Elige with the 4K showing up as usual for Liquid. And now this is going to be a really important round. I think Liquid's economy will be broken and pretty much reset as, as well as optics. So whoever wins this round could, could start taking control a little bit and also build their economy. Still a close game though, with nobody having control on Optic. Do go back into this one as a sort of force. Mixwell just having an upgraded pistol. Nap still has an off. Two M4s on the board beyond that, and Jason R with an ump. So closer holds on the side of Optic as they, they focus on the mid connector there, along with Drop and the top platform. Tarek will be taking a close up position there from behind the box. Did this before with an op and had actually a good amount of success. With an M4, it's going to be a little bit of a different story. Two more inside of Drop, kind of waiting that one out as well. And Liquid still holding in, you know, what has become too surprising of a pattern for them to go for here early on. Tarek catches that first kill from up on top behind the box, but unfortunately due to the Molotov, he's forced back a little bit early. That will lead to the trade. Mixwell also just goes right in for that one. I think trying to retrieve the gun. Yeah, I don't know if that was a bad decision though. And that Obviously. Lead, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that leads to him going down afterwards as well. So all of a sudden this is a 3v4. It's one of those kills where JDM is like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> JDM won't be... Uh, 
too distraught about that since it gives them a nice extra frag right there. And for Liquid, after spotting so much of a presence down on B, they're actually going to swing this over towards A instead. And through the mid-connector and A long, both at the same time. Opting a bit more passive about their hold here, however, they're not going to be directly contesting it at the wall. They get in some previous rounds. They're further back over here on the balcony and on the site. Naf taking the first contact. If that was broken, you might have been able to spot some more of the ramp play, but for the time being, won't be the case. And I'll have to be very cautious since he smoked out a door too. Jason Hard remained quiet though, picks up one, going for the second, four bullets left. Naf just comes in for the nice little casual assist there as he finishes off that kill and then follows it up with the last one as well. Ends up with a nice 3k on it and brings Optic back into control once again. Yeah, and the only player, only one player on Liquid has any money. Everybody else is around 2,000. So Naf shows up big. That shot on Twist was pretty nuts. Um, saves that A site. And no nade follow-up really from Liquid after they spot Jason Art's or I don't even think they spotted him, sorry. After Naf gets that kill, they just you know, Jason Art gets an easy kill on the back of JDM and then all of a sudden they have to look at heaven, they have to look at sight. It becomes pretty problematic for Liquid. And now Team Liquid looking like they're actually going to speed up the pacing a little bit here. They've been pretty quiet before, but now this time even challenging it. Oh, smoke and Elyse had the spot onto the guy on top of Suicide. I think it was Jason Art, but didn't take the shot at it and gave him time to actually fall back here. Decent, like, nade damage done to Elyse and Nitro early on. They both lose a little over, a little under, I should say, half their HP here. 54 and 68 overall, so Nitro surviving with a tad more. But still, Liquid not really able to make that progress early on by trying to get more aggressive. And now, Stan, Twist, and possibly a third player as well going to Trying to make a move on drop. As Rush is mollied out, he can't actually move back in to confirm anything, but he's also one of the only players with close access to the broken wall itself, so he does have to play towards both of those angles. Liquid, though, with not a whole lot of options to work with on a round like this, do decide to go straight forward towards just a pretty usual B execute, actually, which means these A guys are going to have to rotate in pretty quickly if Naf and Rush don't end up coming out big right from the start of this hit. And Rush waits on the corner here, relying on his teammate to hold this off for him a little bit. Rush, though, gets blinded initially off the bat, and Nitro seems a little bit hesitant to commit to it, but anyway, Tarek. Swinging back in, he picks up the first and second trades for this one. Over to the pistol to try to find a fist player by Chicken Coop, but just can't find a gun with any ammo in it, so he ends up going down to a liege. Mixwell swings in for a nice double. It's down to Stanislaw, who trades out one kill into Jason R. Now he's got to take down Mixwell as well, however, and he's only got four HP to do it with. Not going to happen. Mixwell gets a triple kill, and Optic pick up a seventh round. Yeah, and Tariq kind of saving that round. Um, with that 2k, he realizes drops is open, so he just flies over and gets two kills over at that B plat. And all the focus is on him. Everybody's looking at him, and that's actually what allows Mixwell to get those two kills on the back. So Tarek's quick reaction to what's going on, what he needs to do to win the round, um, really saved Optic and also got Mixwell a couple frags where he could, you know, clutch the round. Elyse trying to go quickly out over here towards the ramp to challenge Mixwell this time around, but he's ready for it. Finally out of ammo, though, picking up three kills, so he'll be traded up by JDM, but it's a little consequence. Nitro, though, got him to drop. Apparently nobody was paying attention to that one, and he sneaks off a second frag this time. Short-lived, though, Rush quickly goes back into the doorway to trade him out, and JDM with 9 HP not expecting all that much, so more than likely going to see an eighth from Optic in a few seconds here. Uh. That is what we end up going towards here. You can see the replay on the nice triple kill from Mixwell again. Playing out the aggression a little bit there. Finally out of ammo. That's where JDM does pick up his one kill. But I think uh, damage was even done to him as well before he was able to trade that out as he was down at 9 HP at the end of the round there. So good stuff indeed from Optic. Just trying to solidify these last few rounds here. And now it's all going to be the task of trying to grow as big of a lead as possible. They've already got that secured. Liquid onto another buy though. Could put a halt to this growth from Optic. They have back on AKs and full utility as well. Decent utility, I should say, as well. Still spread into basically just a default, however, for Liquid. Not really innovating too much in their strats on the T side right now. And there's a limit to what you can do, of course, on a map like Cobblestone. At the moment, Liquid has fallen into what may, for Optic, have become a somewhat readable pattern. Liquid will start to push in once again through the mid connector. And I'm sure the guys up top would be able to hear this, but the problem is, is they're actually going to be pinched a moment if they don't watch out for this one. Jason R, I believe, is alone here on A-Long, and he'll have to be cautious of that. But after some push up the steps, they smoke it back off. 
Smoke could come in from the actual long portion of it, however, too. So for the time being, Jason Art will be safe in his own position, but he does need to be cautious of players like Twist on the other side, along with the Suicide Steps players. But they've all fallen back, actually. They're giving this up completely. Uh, but they're going to wrap over towards B to, I believe, again, just go for another straightforward take. JDM, along with the Bomb Care, haven't even pushed out towards the platform just yet. They're cautious of Optic having gotten aggressive here and possibly having an op by the Steps, which is exactly going to be the case for a player like Naf. Who is sitting up here and waiting. Does take the timing shot to being flashed out, but it's way too early. Liquid haven't even started their own hit. That's going to change right now, but the problem is they didn't pressure this at all before. So now Smoke start to roll back in. Thankfully, drop was relatively open, however, so they're actually going to be able to swing in off of that one. Two for two trade as they finally do get themselves into the site. Nice shot from Tarek to take down Liege. Twist with a fast trade, and it saves his own life as he's now down at 16 HP. Naf will now be cornered very low, but he's got enough of a position to be able to knock out Twist. And JDM as well is now stuck between a Rock in a hard place. He'll swing up. Nicely swung on to Jason Ars. He gets that kill, but he's out of time. And Nap is waiting for it to try and knock him down post-timer. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to get him, though. And JDM does make it out of the round with the AK. Yeah, and Optic starting out very nicely on this CT side. Similar to what we saw on Nuke. But, you know, I'm a little worried for him when they switch that half, right? And, and go on to that T side. Liquid, though, you know, ever since Stan's been on Liquid. I think Liquid has been actually a better CT side team than they have been like a CT a T side team. And I see like a lot of really good plays from CT side from them. But I think it was kind of the opposite when they had Optic. I actually thought Optic was a really good T side team. And you know, they're a really good CT side team too, but it's a little bit different, you know? And I think that a lot of that has to do with the player personnel. A little bit of chaos happening at A long in this round, but seemingly under the control of Optic for right now, bringing this down to a 3v3. But we did see I believe it was Rush getting into a position to try and push those guys back over here towards the mid connector. Still seeing everybody grouped up on Liquid inside of that position, however, including the bomb. So I imagine just pulling back for now to regroup and then aggress back out in a few moments here. But Rush possibly taking a risk that could go badly if he finds himself looking towards the wrong angle. He moves in, and in fact, that's exactly what's going to happen. Looking more towards the suicide steps, and Stan finds him hugging the close wall. Trading it out again. The good news is they did rotate Naf over a little bit earlier, so he'll still be able to hold up onto the site, but he's got an op. And there's three players moving in from three possibly different directions. Just a moment against him. He's even going to be flashed into the corner, too. There's really no safe area for him to peek into. The good news for him, though, is that nobody's watching out for the site. So his first one is for free. It's these last two that are going to be somewhat problematic, and I imagine he's delaying it so that we can actually see Tarek rotate back in. He's being surrounded, and I'm not sure if he realizes it just yet, but he's got to check over here towards the other side of it. Close-up shot. Misses that one. Tarek has arrived, but he's a little bit too late to save his teammate's life. Not, however, to get on onto the site. Gets that first quick close out on the Stannis Law as he finally goes down. And now it's him versus JDM, but JDM has the open with one HP. He'll win it out, picking up a fifth round for Team Liquid. Yeah, nice clutch by JDM. You know, I think this Liquid team, I actually think it's going to be a lot better on land, too. Um, a lot of these guys, like like JDM, for instance, COG is actually the team as a whole that is probably just way better on land than they are on line. But JDM as a player, on line, honestly, no offense to him, a lot of times is like very mediocre. Like just misses sometimes, just a bit mediocre, underwhelming. And then on land, plays super good, hits like every shot and hits it with such a quick like reaction speed and firing rate and snappy. Um, and on land is like one of the best ops in North America, maybe even the best op on land to be honest in North America. But online, a lot of times some pretty lackluster. Same with Nitro, I think Nitro is way better on land too. And JDM's going to have the first shot in this round since Optic pretty much on just a half by round here. Already seeing Terra go down with a scout. Half <laughs> tries to re-challenge it with yeah, the... JDM's just dominating that platform, though. Mm -hmm. The recovered scout, and that pretty much opens up the site. We're still going to have, I think, one guy rotating in from the rock position. That's going to be Mixel, actually, who gets a nice headshot. Now he's kind of stuck, though. <laughs> he doesn't even realize Twist is waltzing right up to him. Picking up the easy trade, and now leaving just Jason R alive in a 1v4 here. So more than likely looking at a sixth round for Team Lincoln, unless a miracle should happen. Jason R already down to 13 HP, though, as he takes first contact against Stannis Law, and it is not going to follow through with a kill in his favor. So we see Liquid closing out one more round and bringing us up 6-9. to nine. They still have some recovery work to do, but they may very well be able to bring it back as we're switching halves and heading into the second half in just a few minutes right here at the ESL Pro League.
ESL Pro League is brought to you in part by Logitech G, PaySafeCard, Mountain Dew League, and ESEA. Welcome back, everyone. Unfortunately, it looks like the teams uh, made a gentleman's agreement, so no Negev action going on That's so far. What's up? I think that the admins told them not to as well. Did they? No. Yeah. Well, that's a bummer. Anyway, it's nine to six, still in the favor of Optic, but a bit of a hesitant one. They pick up nine rounds on their CT side, and now they got to jump onto the T side here from Cobblestone and see if they can actually close out of the map, or if Liquid will be able to round the comeback again and claim this one 2-0 for themselves. Yeah, I don't think either half was terrible for for both teams. I think both teams feel like, you know, they can win this. But Optic, I mean, on Nuke, we thought they were just going to take it, right? They won the pistol, and then they got Ecoed on that second half, and then, then they just barely won anything after that. I did get confirmation, by the way. It is a gentleman's agreement. It's not the admins. No, the admins told I No, it is, but the admins told them not to as well. Oh. That's not what I was told. I just asked Rush on Steam, and he told me. <laughs> <laughs> then we have conflicting stories, don't we? <laughs> but anyway, moving on from that. Yeah, Mixwell having himself a pretty decent first half, but it was really, it was really, I think, because we're looking at like an op uh, highlight, it was actually JDM uh, that had most of Mixwell. wasn't even really picking up the op for most of that. It was actually Naf, I think. Yeah, no, Naf played great on that CT side. But it does look like we're going live now, folks, so let's hop into it. It's going to be, again, nine to six is the starting scoreline here with Optic on their T side, and Team Liquid taking a look at them. Pretty usual enough. No one doing anything crazy here for the first round. I'm not going to see any raid boss buys or anything. So everybody just going straight forward. Team Liquid actually not even buying a kit either. So just keep that in mind if this comes down to a closer post plant scenario. Optic on their opening split though. Just a 3-2. So nothing out of the ordinary there either. Pretty standard opener. Now we have to see where they actually choose to go towards. It's looking like early on, they'll send the bomb with two other players out through A long, but that could very quickly change or turn itself into a sort of drop split. But if they do that, I think Liquid are set up to counter that in a little bit with Twists and Stan being positioned in there. They're just going to be getting those B players to rotate out quickly because you still have a Liege alone on that A site and he could very well get, just get himself overwhelmed, especially now with another player splitting from the B halls, potentially both actually, grouping up towards that mid connector to just push out towards the A site. Yeah, so a lot of this is going to fall on a liege and how well he holds this or stays alive in the site. And a liege up on top of the shed right now. He's actually going to be kind of in the open, especially from these A-long players, if he's not cautious about this. So flashed out, and yeah, doesn't even want to take the contact on that one. Just gets a little bit skittish when he sees how many nades were flying over. So falls back behind the barrel. That's a cornered position, though. There's nowhere to run from that spot. So he's actually going to get taken down without a single trade to it. Stan tries to creep in through the rack hole there, but that's another kill for Optic here. Twist close up, finally picking one up for the CT side. But now it's a 4v3. Mixwell also pushing himself forward behind him. He's actually going to get a pretty big flight. Right? Look at all that damage he's doing here. Here, has taken down one, brought another one down to two HP. He wanted the knife kill for a second there, but now it's actually going to close out on JDM. So it's just Nitro now, and this is definitely going to be a pistol round for Optic as they'll push into double digits to start off the second half now. Nitro trying to hold as well as he can actually does sneak in one more, but finally knocked out by Mixwell. Yeah, so Optic getting that pistol round, and I just hope they don't lose this eco for their sake and then just lose out basically, which is what happened on Nuke. Mixwell getting boosted into heaven is a nice flank. Shooting at the kneecaps over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Knocking him out quick. And that now will take us into the fourth round for Liquid, where actually everything started to go super chaotic on us in the last map there. As you mentioned, we don't want to see that eco happening again. This one's actually a bit weird. Uh, it's relatively light for some. 
like a leash specifically just going for the eagle buy, not picking up anything behind it. Whereas others just go all in here. And JDM obviously saving for the off, of course, in the first gun round, but beyond that, things a little bit more interesting. And JDM even trying to push forward a bit early on there just to check for that right corner where someone usually tries to hide out it, but won't be the case this time. Renee on Optic actually holding back at the very edge of this platform push. While also having a few players kind of waiting outside. Do you know if they changed the way the uh, the R8 works at all? Because I know they changed the price, but did they change the way it works? The charge up on the left click is oh, as much Oh, no. Anymore. I look away for two seconds <laughs> to ask you that question. A scout and a D headshot go off <laughs> on an optic, and Liquid's poised to win the anti-EK. Well, there you go. He just jinxed it again. <sighs> optic, are you kidding me, man? <laughs> well, it's not over yet. Optic, you're looking like they're probably going to group up after Tarek tosses off the smoke here and try to swing this over towards A, probably. In they'll go. And Stan also waits on the top of the steps over there. But oh, nice catch from Mixwell, actually. Just as Nitro was going for the cross, he peeks into the open. They even catch Stan trying to get sneaky on suicide steps. Tarek just not getting the damage he would have hoped for just yet. Slowly taking him down, of course. But now Twist rolling in from the backside catches another very important trade against Mixwell as it does allow them to hold their man advantage. Tarek, though, picks down Twist, takes him out. Stan is all very low at 11 HP, but Tarek having to kind of do double duty and watching out these angles. He gets one, fully commits to it as well. And Stan now trying to clutch 1v1 against Jason R. He spotted the scout behind him. In fact, Jason R goes up and gets tagged twice, but thankfully for him, Stan was pretty much out of ammo on that CZ. And we do still see Optic able to close out. Yeah, and he was also very, very low HP. And Tarek knew he was low HP. He kept, you know, hitting his feet there. So Optic survives it. The 3v3, the 3v5. Uh, they managed to win it out. Liquid's just going to full save here. But what this will probably mean is that if Liquid does win that fourth round gun round, Optics is just not going to have that much money to, to rebuy up. Um, just that much less money. And if they do rebuy up, it's not going to be much money. Oh, Liege hitting a nice shot to start us off. And a second one as well. Punishing drop players heavily here. JDM comes in to support his teammate there. This is actually brought down to a 2v2 with the CTs having control over the bomb in this round now. As we see both of them picking up UMPs and just smoking it back off. So once again, the round has been tossed into chaos. As at this point, Liquid may very well have themselves... Well, this would just be like a super eco since they didn't even... Yeah, they were just USPs. Yeah, they didn't really have to invest in this one. So it looks like actually they don't decide to stick in with the bomb for right now. JDM, unfortunately, is not going to be able to contest that. They back away from it. The counter boosted Nitro over. I think they may read into this, though. Yeah, they're already checking for it, and Mixwell had just spotted Nitro, so they know for sure what's going on here, and they have to assume that the last guy is somewhere inside of drop. So Mixwell's kind of being the one to watch out for this, while his teammate plants the bomb. Now it's just a matter of knocking out the last two. Mixwell doing good damage to the first, and finishing him off as well. That's JDM getting knocked out. The last one, Nitro. She doesn't even push up with the reload there, just sits behind it at 34 HP. There's not a whole lot that he can do, unfortunately, so it is looking like Optic are going to be able to recover this once more, unless something interesting happens here, but it won't be the case. Rush does catch him as soon as Nitro peeks into the open, and Optic will get their 12th, but very messy. I mean, that's the same thing that happened on Nuke. They just rushed upper on their anti-eco. Just, hey, just rush upper, and it ended up in a 2v2. And this time, they just said, hey, let's just rush B. Ended up in a 2v2. And, I mean... Yeah, they ended up winning the round and they win the 2v2, but look at their money. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's just, you just, <laughs> you're losing such a, such the economic advantage that you have by doing things like that. It'll be an immediate eco of uh, Optic to lose this one or an immediate force play, depending on how they want to play it. But Link with themselves back into a full buy of JDM, fully saving for both of those anti ecos or both those ecos for Liquid. Uh, gets himself the op nice and early, and possibly a shot too. I think he dropped down a little bit too early though, yeah, so I think misses. He hit him if he didn't fall. Mm -hmm. So he misses the opportunity to take down Tarek. There's going to be a lot more action happening at drop in a moment though, as they're mulling that off. They're moving possibly two or three players in to take control there. A bit of delay, obviously, to wait for that Molly to burn back out. Now they do move in for control, but on the outside, well, they've got to be careful as Liege is waiting with an AUG in hand. A more common theme as now a player from Liquid decides to pick it back up and experiment with it a little bit more. I think they're going to retake drop control, though. Swiss will be the one to do that as he moves back in, catches one kill, traded back out. He should have spotted both of those other players, not just the one that traded him, however. So they'll get a good scope for where exactly the players are positioned. 
They did not see the bomb, but on the outside of the window here, Nitro is going to be waiting for it. So he eliminates Rush. The last two are still trying to start this push up onto the A ramp, but Stanislaw in the boosted up position on the wall just destroys them both. So Optic's hesitance here ultimately becomes their downfall. And unless Naf can bring out some magic, this is going to become a route for Team Liquid. And there you go. Yeah, and one of the things, again, that makes that possible is that JDM's taking B plot control. He has B comply control. They smoke out the back. They know that, hey, they can take these risks and take drop control because JDM could even not even look at B and then flash for him. Because if they're going to retake B plot control, you know what they're going to do? They're going to throw a flashbang 100% of the time because they know JDM's opting it. And that's going to give them that tell that they are even in the B area, right? So they could take those type of risks where they retake drop control. JDM can go and they could have three, maybe even four people fight there if they want. Well, now... With Optic back onto a full save here, more than likely we're just going to see an all one attempt into one of the sites, which will probably be an A site take, as we're seeing from the current formation of players. Everybody sort of just grouping back up, leaving themselves past the doorway here at Liquid. Well, we've already seen a few of their players get closer up towards that mid connector to challenge it, but not seeing all that much yet. Now Optic do start to move in, however, and they're just going to go right for this. No reason to delay it in all reality here. This is this is a uh, this is a far cry anyway. While Tarek does snipe out one player here at range with the P250, that will probably be the only one. Mixwall is the last man standing with just a Glock in hand. Tries to trade out for a better pistol, but won't happen there. Nitro finishes this off and puts Team Liquid up to eight. Yeah, and remember, the only reason Optic wasn't able to afford that is because of how poorly their anti goes went. Um, usually, like, if, if they would have just you know, kept some guns on those anti-ecos and just gotten that fourth round gun round close, gotten three kills, and then bought the following round and won that one, and it was, you know, 13-7, they would have won. Like, almost certainly, because Liquid would just be on, like, $2,000 each. Uh, but instead, the anti-ecos go so poorly, and uh, they're not even able to capitalize and rebuy. And now Liquid, all of a sudden, they're not in a bad spot at all. They have a lot of money. It's 12-8, to 8, but they're a really, really good CT-sided team. And immediately JDM hitting another shot here against Rush. Drops another guy from Optic out of the running here, splitting up their offense two and two. And two. Uh, more than likely still turning itself into a probable A split here since the guys on A long don't seem to be showing any signs of falling back. They're still getting ready to push up as soon as we can see the others in the B halls regroup here. And in fact, the split part's not even going to happen. It looks like they're just going to go straight for B while pulling everybody back. Not even going to be having Mixwell go in towards drop to try to hold control there. Everybody just pushing directly at this. Liquid have not rotated the extra second man off of this site just yet, so they're even going to have that to deal with. It's not necessarily going to be the easy one-man site hold that you usually see in this case. As they do move in, JDM Ready. Nitro also hits his first shot. He's a little bit lower though, so there's an open opportunity for a trade to happen right there, and they do capitalize upon it. But rotations moving quickly. Stanislaw already knocking out Tarek. Nah, we'll see what he can do. He almost finds one, but JDM actually quick to dive back away from below there. And now Nath is really stuck. There's not a whole lot that he can do except maybe a lucky headshot or two off here, but not even that's gonna happen. Elige takes him out with the AUG, and yet another gun round goes by the way of Team Liquid. Yeah, JDM gets boosted drop, gets that kill onto Rush. Then he goes over to A and holds it with Nitro. Nitro playing up close middle. Always going to be good for that first frag. Almost almost always, except for on Nuke, apparently. <laughs> um, just post it up, gets that one. Now Optic on another save. Just a Glock, D, a couple P250s, Tech 9, Smoke Flash on Jason R. And I don't know, like one of the strengths of Optic when they had Stanislaw was their T side and buying Force buys and having Tech 9s and winning low buys and having good utility usage on those rounds. And without him, they have none of that. And that was one of their best strengths as a team. Well, we're not seeing that anymore here now. Was Optic again just going to go for another very straightforward play into the B-bomb site. JDM already up to two here. One's going to pressure close up. He might not be ready for that, but thankfully Stan's available. is going to bail him out very nicely. JDM at 60 HP. Probably can't do much else for the rest of this round, but thankfully Elyse is wrapping in here as well. And it's going to be a quick clean up here. Easy 10th round for Liquid. What do you do if you're Optic? Not not necessarily in this, but for their team. You know, do you try to pick up an in-game leader? Do you try to just force somebody to in-game lead? Most in-game leaders are just in-game leaders because not, like, most people don't want to in-game lead. Mm -hmm. There's in-game leaders out of necessity. You know, most people are. Like, Flusha did it out of necessity, right? Uh, Lurpus, I was talking to him on Twitter about it. He just did it out of necessity. There's just nobody else, yeah. so he just did it. You know, Stewie doesn't want an in-game lead, but he's an in-game leader. I did the same thing. I didn't want an in-game lead. You've got to do it to make the best team possible. you got to just do it. Um, 
So what do you, you know, if you're optic, I think, I don't know. What do you do? The other, I mean, the other problem is like, you know, who is even available if they want to just go for it? I know there's, there's, there's nobody. You have to buy someone out. And they actually have to want to come on your team in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> the way like the contracts and the, the ecosystem works around, you know, org selling players and players signing these ridiculous contracts where the org just owns them basically. Yeah. It makes it so hard to have any type of player like flexibility to get the team. Oh, nice shot from JDM. He got a great spawn there too. Just goes right for the A long push and immediately takes down that. So that's another easy 5v4 How many times has JDM made a 5v4 though? That's, that's got to be like just in this half alone. That's got to be the third half. Time. Yeah, I think it's the third time on gun rounds. Mm -hmm. So he's been he's been a shining star so far here on the second map. And oh, and he's he's winning the all battle like crazy versus Mixwell. Mm -hmm. One player uh, they brought up the stats actually a few a few seconds ago there, but if you weren't paying attention, that one player that actually again isn't really doing too well at the moment is Twist, the new step, and he's actually doing pretty poorly. He's like his ADR is only like 40 ADR at this point. Well, it's a new role. It's going to be something that he's going to have to get used to, um, and, and Liquid's going to have to work on. So I wouldn't look into it too much right now. Well, regardless of this, we do see Optic getting ready to try and deploy a little bit of pressure and to drop the bomb a bit lagging behind here at this point. Still in the very entrance to those B halls as it's gone up the steps outside of mid connectors. So it's going to take them a second to set up towards the platform push if they decide to go for that. But right now, everyone leaning towards drop, possibly just Tarek, is going to be the only player to push out towards the uh, the platform itself. 40 seconds left, so they've got to make a move here soon. And I think Liquid have really already sort of read into this one. They've got a pinch in the event they try to A split. The guys on the A side are actually not too fully committed to it, so they can rotate over really quickly. Twist holding this close angle. He's actually going to be really important in this round here. Catching a first one, tries to swing out for a second, but traded. The Liege, full platform hold, and now Stan. There's that rotate quickly from the window player, taking out Mixwell, getting aggressive to pick up the second one, and he succeeds in doing so. Knocks out Jason R. Four alive again for Team Liquid. So just like on the last map, their money's going to go soaring here as they get lead at the start of the second half. I mean, yeah, each one of them has over like 10k a piece. JDM, whether it's the B plat, whether it's getting boosted drop, whether it's pushing long A there, just making an impact and making his impact felt every single round. Um, nothing going towards A. The rotate comes really early towards A. And Liquid is just crushing Optic right now. And Optic looks kind of lost. Yeah, and again, another anti-eco and another pretty straightforward strat here. They even have utility this time, but they're not going to try to really... They're not really going to try to up the difficulty of their actual push at all. For the most part, probably... Which is going to be a typical like 3 2 drop and platform push on the B. May not even see much heading towards drop right now. They're out, and again, kills coming in for Liquid. A bit messy on that spray actually from the Liege, but he still gets one. And there you go, the round's already over, much like many of these uh, past eco rounds from Optic. The second they start the hit, the. Uh... Well, let's see how many people have been alive on each of these Liquid round one. Rounds one. Like, it's just. It seems ridiculous. Yeah, so let's hold tab for a second and see if we can get that up on the board. Thanks, DJ. There we go. No, you need the mouse over thing. Mouse over the, the, the routes. Let's see. No, the, no, the CT round ones. one. <laughs> four, 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 five, four, four. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> They're crushing them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's, there's not a whole lot going on here in the favor of Optic at this point when they don't outright win the round. JDM, however, gets flat. That does swing open an opportunity here, and that's the, that's the first time I think JDM has gone down first in a gun round without him at least trading out one player here. Now Twist tries to get really aggressive there, pays the price for it. So just as we were talking about how dominant Liquid were being on this gun round, or on these gun rounds, well, it goes the other way, and Optic actually went out this one without breaking a sweat. Yeah, just a, a clean... Clean B hit by them. Tarek gets out on the box, gets a pop flash thrown for him, runs out, kills JDM right away. It's a nice shot on the leash here. Pretty much takes the site by himself. And once you get on that platform, it's pretty pretty T-sided um, if you're just going to straight peek into him. Now, generally what the CTs do is they try to time it with flash mangs, get around the statue, have the teammates flash towards towards them while they dodge the flash the statue, and then that's how they get the kills and the refrags. Yeah, a lot of nades coming in from Liquid earlier on here on the platform, assuming that Optic were going to try to do a similar strat this time, and they were somewhat right about that. Optic, again, did push out a lot of their players right Look up at the, the smoke. Nitro already on it. Mm-hmm.
And they are going to try to push their way out, but Liquid didn't put a player close up this time. Still seeing JDM go down first, and Terex, super aggressive, pushes past the smoke. He had a little bit of a hole in it that he was able to push through and catches himself a kill. Now Nitro coming in on the flank. He's only going to get one kill, though, and Rush also found another frag against Stanislaw with a nade. Now it's down to Twist, who will find an additional kill, but has dropped to 20 HP in the process. Alone, no additional utility. Just got re-smoked here, but although he doesn't really seem to care too much about that. Pushing in, finds Mixwell, so now we're down to a 1v1, and it's Nafa attempting to clutch it out for the optic side of things. Bomb not going down onto the ground just yet. He's still stuck on the steps, being cautious of Liquid just pushing right back in, but if he continues to hold, looking over here towards the drop room, he's going to spot Twist and get the nice shot to close out on this round, giving Optic their 14th. You know, not having a big impact with the off. It seems like they're having him off instead of Mixwell this game. Mixwell maybe not feeling it so much. Uh... But Liquid, they should have won that round. I mean, they had Nitro on the flank. They knew nobody was A. Nitro was very quick flanking. Uh, they had four players there, essentially. That Liquid should never lose that round. That should never be a round loss for Liquid. Um, and you see it commonly happen when something works, but nothing else has been working. As soon as something works, you just do the same thing. And Liquid read it. They said, hey, it's, it's just going to be the same thing. They're going to do the exact same thing because it worked the last round. And they have nothing else to fall back on. Nothing else even came close to working. And somehow they're able to win the round with four Liquid players there and a quick flank. Yeah, Liquid calling for a tactical pause off of the... Oh, now, now you're showing the... Uh... <laughs> cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs> They call for a tactical pause after the loss of those last two here, and the potential actually for this to get quite dangerous, considering the money for Team Liquid now, too. Obviously, it was a huge amount, but it's going to dwindle here, especially after a round like this one, uh, where I think they're actually about to run out. They've got to be in the low, like, 2 to 1k at this point. And taking a look at the stats from JDM there, too. Probably, if not the leader, pretty close to it so far from Team Liquid. He's been pretty good, but unfortunately fell short on the last two rounds and was not able to find that early impact to bring it down to a 5v4, which oftentimes was causing a sort of freeze-up on Optic, but he really would not want to try to push in past that. The unpause coming in now. We as the observers spam those keys in the, in the chat for some reason. Just a bit of a mistake, I imagine. But we're back into it now. And let's take a look and see if Liquid can put a stop to this optic push. Keep in mind, they held the lead for most of this, actually. And it's just now them pushing forward with the capability to end this right here, right now. If they can break Liquid's economy, they pushed up to 15 in the process. Yeah, and I mean, all they're doing is Tariq is faking B. He already threw all his nades, broken wall and whatnot. And then they're just walking A, so trying to play off that success. And it's kind of catching Liquid. I mean, stands there by himself. Spotting it too, and doing some decent damage to Jason R. Just not able to capitalize on the kill early on. But he has spotted the play, and there is some hesitance here from Optic now on actually getting up on top of the ramp. So in that process, let's look at how many players got out here from Liquid that quickly. They only had Stanislaw here a moment ago, but now they've got three more in the site. Another one winning on the balcony. This is gonna be rough now. Optic losing everybody except for Mixwell, and he's not far behind. He picked up one kill. That's gonna be it though, and it's a fast shutdown on this round from Liquid. Yeah, that was just really poorly ex executed by Optic. I mean, they had the they actually the strat wasn't that bad. Uh, they were just throwing a fake with Tarek, but the four players at A just took way too long. I mean, way too long, but <laughs> the strats that Optic is even having success with are just so basic. You know, it's it's nothing crazy. They literally just, the two rounds they won on T-side so far, besides the pistol and the anti-ecos, where they just kind of brute forced out B. One round they won clean. The next round they should have lost. Liquid just kind of failed as individuals with four people there. And then that time they say, hey, I worked twice. Let's just fake it and go towards A. But it was, you know, by the time he faked it, they were hitting A 15, 20 seconds later. Everybody on Liquid was kind of leaning that way anyways towards A. Once they realized it was a fake at B. So pause again. This time, of course, from the... I think again, actually, it's from... Uh, it's from uh the Optic guys actually, it's, they unfortunately are going to be kind of at the razor's edge of their own buying power here too. They're able to afford the investment, but as we can see, there's basically no utility. Uh, they've got two smokes and two flashbangs, and that is it. Jason R doesn't even get head armor behind his AK. Yeah, so they're going to go back to what worked. <laughs> Which is just this direct play on the B. And usually it's been pretty quick. I mean, they just don't really have anything to fall back on. You know, they just don't. Like, this Optic team is kind of a mess right now. The way they're winning rounds, I'm telling you, is not going to translate, like, to land victories. It's just not. 
Well, now they're going to move here, and JDM, while he is hit, still is able to hit one of his own. And now look at this from Twist and Elyse. Both of them working together. Elyse boosted up on the pizza box there, taking down Tarek and Rush. Elyse finding one more, and what a quick shutdown that becomes for Team Liquid, which is a huge pile of corpses right next to the broken wall. Ties the game up again. No allows money either. I'm yeah. Optic. And completely breaks. I mean, this is just not a way that you're going to win rounds against good teams. It's really not. Like, it's going to happen sometimes, and especially on the internet. Yeah, sometimes it'll happen, especially against Liquid with their, where they're trying to fit twists in and stuff like that. But it's just, I mean, if they play against SK on LAN and they try to play like this, I think they would just get wrecked, you know? Yeah. Um, it's just not a recipe for success. And remember, on T-side, on Nuke, for instance, how were they winning rounds? They were straight peaking upper, and Nitro was just kind of failing as an individual, to be quite honest. Do you think that's going to happen on LAN, you know, like in a high-pressure match where they play... And, and Liquid super practiced up? Probably not. <laughs> so Optic on to essentially just a P250 upgraded round at this point. And then JDM, there we go. He's back to hitting those early 5v4 shots again. Obviously, against Pistols, not too difficult of a shot to hit, but still, the connection matters in its importance there as Rush does sneak past him this time. So a little bit of control gained for Optic, but nothing huge to work off of here. More than likely, these guys are going to end up falling back to regroup in the B halls, and it's looking like they'll try to go for a drop control, but Jason R gets isolated from Mixwell pretty early on in this push. Twist, it's an easy kill for him to sink. Now we're at a 3v5 in the last three. Are going to try to just play this together. Twist, obviously a little bit off timing with the push there. A nice shot from Nath, actually. Immediately executes Twist to trade that one back out. Now they've got an M4 to work with. They spot that location of Nitro outside. And obviously, have a few possible locations they'll be playing from if they do decide to swing out in that direction. But for right now, they're not deciding to stick with that. They're going to reboost their third player up on top and leave a rush downstairs. They'd already done that for one of their own guys, but now Stan. Oh, hello. Stan's just going to find a lucky kill right there. Not fast on the trade. Does trade it back out onto Stan, of course. And then Nitro isolating one of the drop players. Pretty sure that Stan should have been able to communicate that Nap was also pushing from this direction. And if not, they realize it now. So Nitro closes out, and Team Liquid do push up onto 15. Yeah, Nitro actually always does that. Um, if you watch what he did there, if somebody jiggle peeks him, he literally would just hold the pixel and just keep spraying and mm -hmm. just hold mouse one down. Um, most people will try to like time it for when they re-peek him, right? But he catches a lot of people like that. And, and have, he catches me like that all the time. I'll jiggle peek him and he'll just hold mouse one and just will not stop spraying that corner. And naturally, you're jiggle peeking to re-peek and you still re-peek and you re-peek right into his bullets. And that's exactly what we saw there. So that's like a, something that he does. Naf does that sometimes. A couple of really good NA players do that. And uh, we saw it in action right there. Yeah, so Optic on to the 30th round here now. Are just going to try to spread their players out into a default, not going back to that usual push out onto the B platform. While it worked its first couple attempts, it's pretty much been completely countered out now by Liquid in the last two or three times they've attempted it, so it won't be too wise to go back to that. Tarek still holds a bit of a forward position up towards the entrance of the broken wall, but is definitely not pushing out anytime soon. It was looking as if Optic was going to try to give him a flashbang or two to try and support his push out to that, but the bomb itself still waiting in the middle of these halls as they have a few players back out in the mid-courtyard ready to push in through the connector if they decide to want to take this towards A instead. And Team Liquid not panicking at all, still in their own sort of default setup here. A little bit more forward about it. Stan and Nitro both playing through the ramp. Basically nobody watching for long A pressure. Still three on A, of course, or excuse me, three on B, of course. But this is much more normal position than being taken up by them. And Twist being the one to guard out towards drop, probably actually going to have a bit of work to do. As we can already see, Optic moving in for a bit of control there. Elyse curious as if they are going to try to split this, watching outside of the window, but not fully committing himself in. Is just waiting by the doorway here, and has the option to fall right back in the other direction should Twist get challenged and go down, which has been somewhat of a common theme as he's been struggling a little bit here now, jumping into that new role, but finding the first and second kills right off the bat. Kills the drop pressure. Now it's JDM's time to shine. He finds one. Elise trading on a kill and then JDM finds the final one. Ends it with a double kill and with a final score of 16 to 14. Team Liquid take this second map and they go 2-0 on the night. Yeah, and that's uh, I know the scores were close, you know, the on Nuke and, yeah. and Cobble. Both the scores were close, but I'm telling you, just the way Optic plays is not a recipe for success. It's just not. And losing Stannis I mean, I don't know if any team has has could replace one player and like you know be as go go to such a lower level right yep. like lose so much as optic loss with stand because it's just it's just not gonna work it's not gonna work against good teams trying to play like that it's really not despite the the close score 
All right. So with that said, we're going to bring the analysts into the conversation now and get their final thoughts on the second map. Optic, once again, getting very close to closing out with some good momentum in the first half, but just not able to do it in the end. I actually had a, a one-liner prepared. It was like, wow, NAF's really laying down the law, you know, because it stands law. But in reality, <laughs> that's just not the way that that panned out. Yeah, no, they kind of fizzled out at the end there. Uh, sadly for Optic, started off strong, just like on Nuke. Uh, but in the end, it's what we mentioned before the game started, really, the fact that they're going to do stuff so simplistic on the T side that it's only going to take you so far before you hit, you know, not a green wall. Hey, <laughs> hey. Uh, <laughs> Made, made you laugh. That's all that matters. You, you did fantastic. Oh, yeah. Honestly, I'm impressed. Uh, but yeah, so basically it becomes too simplistic. And you see the one or the couple of rounds they went on the T side is simply off of, you know, Tarek finding the opening frags on, on JDM a couple of times or Nitro misplaying, uh, you know, sp his position a few times. But it's not going to, you know, get you six rounds or anything like that. It's going to get you one or two and that's it. And then a team as good as Liquid are going to, you know, close it out and, and basically play a pretty standard CT half for the better part of it. And it's unfortunate for Optic as well because they probably could have gotten away uh, with their uh, well, their first half and their CT side actually with more rounds than what they did initially as well because they, uh, they were a tiny bit late to adapt actually, uh, which cost them a couple of rounds. And I think one of the replays actually that we have, uh, which is round nine, is, oh, is, uh, is that the replay we have? That's uh, Yeah, that's the replay we have. Here it is. Uh, so this is pretty much after uh, Liquid abusing uh, that A bomb set and finding most of their success here. Uh, because Optic decided to play uh, only, t uh, well, with fewer players towards that A bomb set, start, uh, wanted to play very passive on A, which allowed for Liquid to basically walk up into their site. This time they take a bit of a different approach. They put three players on towards that bomb site and actually play aggressive as well. So even if they don't actually get the, the necessary trades they need, as you can see, they're playing from a 2v3 situation, it does allow them to actually get rotations in uh, before Liquid has gotten onto the bomb site. So even though it doesn't end up in a round win, it's still showing that Optic made the adaptions necessary to actually stay uh, stay competitive in the game. But you know, you would have liked to see that just right from the get-go. We actually have a tweet from Twist we're gonna put up here now for you guys to see at home. Uh, but I think uh, the real thing to think here is in this server, uh, even, you know, even the, the coaching around it, let's say Hayes, there's a ton of talent. Like, oh, they, they, absolutely. It, the skill ceiling within this this server alone is is pretty incredible. Yeah. And, uh, if, uh, you know, and especially in the case of uh, Optic, you need to find that perfect person to, to put that in the system, right? Like you had in the previous lineup, that's when you see them really shine. And that's when Optic all of a sudden become a threat to, to win tournaments. And for Liquid, you know, they hopefully have found their steady five right now that they can work with uh, and can take that, you know, and use that talent that they have on paper and actually put it into practice and, and showcase, you know, that they can get up to old heights. Well, our next map, or excuse me, our next matchup is going to be Cloud9 and SK. It's actually our title fight of the night. Yeah, I highest just of point that right now. So if you guys like it, uh, well, it's mine. You can't have it. <laughs> so... Our, our, our basically our title fight, right? Yeah. The night is like Mayweather versus McGregor, pretty much. Well, hold on, I wouldn't go that far, but <laughs> it's definitely uh, a, a gladiator type match. We're gonna go to that uh, after the break. Yeah. But just in case you didn't know, you can get this past VOD and even the one of the match before that over at YouTube.com/eslcs, where you can find that VOD, all the VODs. You can get them all there. You know what? Just go get them all. You gotta catch them all, <laughs> right? You gotta watch them all, something like that. All 150. Yes. Anyway, we're going to go to a quick break. We come back. It's SK. It's Cloud9. It's the one you've been waiting to see. We'll be right back after this.